Hello Scrappers! Uh, welcome back to my channel. And I just want to do a fairly quick video today on um, BGA chips. Uh, I get a lot of questions about the videos I've released. I think there's three or four videos I've released so far on processing BGA chips. Uh, I've got one where I wet ash them, I've got one where I incinerate them, and one where I just deal with um, memory chip BGA chips. So, and I get a lot of questions on those. People, first of all, they don't know what constitutes a BGA chip, and that's pretty simple. Um, these are all different types of BGA chips, and this is by no means, um, you know, all inclusive. There's, there's, you'll come across all kinds of BGA chips. Um, there's, there's these over here, which I like to process for gold over here. And there's a lot of them that aren't any good. And what, what, what's not here is uh, ceramic. I, I tend to throw those out because they don't really contain much in the way of recoverable precious metals. So I don't have a lot of examples of ceramic BGA chips to show you. But uh, you'll come across these other kinds. And what is a BGA chip? Well, basically the back of the chip has a lot of little solder balls on it. And I'll show you a close-up of one. And what those solder balls are is how it mates with the motherboard or the circuit board that it goes on. They'll uh, center it over the pads, all the little solder pads on the board, and then they'll put some um, some paste on there and they'll heat it up and the solder will flow and it'll make all those little 150, 200 little connections will be made to the board. And uh, what they call these solder balls is a ball grid array. And uh, that's how we get the uh, acronym BGA from Ball Grid Array. So that's the, all these are different kinds of BGA chips. Um, and another question I get beyond what is a BGA chip is what are the different types of BGA chips? Well, there's all kinds of different types. You got uh, these are what are called gold corner BGAs because see that little golden corner down there? I'm ashamed to admit I don't know what that gold corner is for. Ground plane? I don't know. Anyway, and for my money, these are the best kind of chips to process for gold. The black epoxy blob in the center of this is probably about 1 to 1.1% gold by weight on these sorts of BGA chips. So these are the kind I like the best. Um, probably next best would be these kind here with the uh, shiny circle in the center. And what this circle is, is the top of a big copper heat sink that's bonded onto the die in there to get the heat out of the chip. So these chips are really heavy because they've got all that copper in them. So that's going to throw off your calculation of yield. Somebody was asking me in the comments of one of my BGA uh, videos how to help them calculate the yield. Well, it's going to depend on lots of things. It's going to depend on the average size of the chips you're processing. It's going to depend on how many of them have heat sinks in them versus how many don't. Because, you know, the heat sinks, these chips are a lot heavier. They still contain gold, but since they're so heavy, you get like less gold per pound of these than you do in gold per pound from these. Just because there's no heavy copper heat sink in them. So let's see, other types of BGA chips we've got. These are... These chips take the metal heat sink idea a little further. They have a, a copper plate that covers the whole top of the chip. And by the way, I think the reason that these, these copper plates are shiny and silver is because they are actually plated with silver. Some of them, maybe not all of them, some of them may be plated with some other shiny metal, but I think a lot of them are plated with silver, just so they don't corrode. But they've got a, a, a plate that covers the whole top of the chip. But if you flip, flip the chip over, you can see that it's kind of kind of the same construction as a BGA chip. You've got the fiberglass backing with all the balls on it and you've got an epoxy blob in the middle. The epoxy blob is where all your gold's going to be. So with these chips, and again, your yield's going to be really low cuz with the big heavy copper plate on this, this is a really heavy chip, but the amount of gold you're going to get out of it is is no more than one of these or one of these. So your yield per pound on these gets really low. But per chip, it's not bad. Now on these, what you need to do is you need to get a really thin knife blade in there. 
and peel this fiberglass backing and epoxy blob off of the plate. And then you can process them like you would uh, other BGA chips. I prefer incineration. I've done videos on um, wet ashing. I don't really like wet ashing. I don't recommend it. But uh, you can wet ash it. Uh, you can incinerate it. You know, and I'll put links in the in the comments to all the different ways that um, I process VGA chips. Um, another thing you could do is you could probably just incinerate this whole thing, and then just pull the copper plates out of the ashes. And uh, hey, take them to the recycler then, right? Yeah. Uh, but don't get your fire hot enough to actually melt the copper because. Uh, then the copper will uh, alloy with the gold bond wires and then you've got a little bit trickier problem for getting it back. You don't want that. Um, down here we've got some small BGA chips and these don't have the kind of fiberglass backing really. Well it's kind of internal. I guess it's there but it's not separate from the epoxy. You can't really peel it off. And these are the kind of... Uh, the, you'll see a lot of these big square ones here on uh, on lots of equipment um, and these smaller square and rectangular ones you'll see these on, on on ram sticks those are the kind of chips you'll see on ram sticks so these are these are probably ram chips down here you can't really do anything with them pre-processing wise you can just go ahead right ahead and incinerate or wet ash these I prefer incineration and just you know get the gold bond wires out of the ashes that's probably your best way to go. Um, over here, we've got what I what I call flip chips. I believe that is the uh, technical term for them, but I've heard them called other things. And basically, what you've got with flip chips is they have flipped the die upside down with respect to how they're made in these other chips, so that there's really no need for bond wires. So. The, the die itself binds right directly to the substrate, to little pads on the substrate, so that there's no need for bond wires. So there's really very little gold or other precious metals in these flip chips. Now this one has a little bit of gold um, um, artwork on it. That's probably got more gold in the artwork than on any, any other part of the chip. So. Uh, Flip chips generally aren't worth the effort. I mean, in theory, there has to be, you know, tiny little balls of gold in there somewhere to make the contection. But, boy, it'll take a lot of these, and you'll have to grind them up really fine to get to that gold. I really don't see them as being worth the effort. And they come in lots of different sizes and, uh, and form factors down to little tiny ones here. And then this is a flip chip, too, except that it's got a, uh, a heavy copper heat sink mounted over the entire top of it. Now you can pry that off with a screwdriver and just keep the copper heat sink because that's going to be worth a lot more than whatever's underneath it. I guarantee that. And then when it comes to uh, oddballs, you're going to find all kinds of oddball BGAs. See this is this has got the back of a regular like a uh, uh, gold corner BGA but on the front it's got two different uh, blobs on it and it's got a place for a third that was never mounted. So, But still, you know, you can just peel these blobs off. So that brings me to like pre-processing. What do I do to pre-process these? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, the fiberglass backing really doesn't contain much in the way of gold. So you just want to get rid of it. And usually, not always, but usually you can just peel it right off. Most of your gold's right here in this blob, right here. Now, there's some pretty shiny gold on this thing right here, but I can tell you what, it's a really thin layer of plating and it's really hard to get at and it takes a whole lot of these to amount to anything. So I have tried several different methods to get the gold out of these, out of the bottoms of these BGA chips. And I'll tell you what, I haven't hit on an economical one yet. Yeah, you can get the gold out, but you're going to spend a lot more time and money than getting that gold is worth basically. And you really, you really need to try processing them by, you know, in large, you really need to try processing them in large quantities to make it even that worthwhile. Just a few, no. But uh, once you get the, once you separate this dead weight from the epoxy blob, this is the part that contains between 1 and 1.1% 1 .1 gold by weight. 
So that's why these are my favorite chips to process. They're really easy to peel apart. Um, they've got good gold in them. Now these chips, they're about as easy to peel apart, but again, they're not going to have as much gold in them because they've got the, by weight, they're not going to have as much gold in them because of the big copper heat sink in there. But of course, you know, you get a little bit of copper too. So, you know, that's kind of a bonus. With these, you get some copper too. Now there is one type like this one right here, which has multiple layers of copper heat sink in there. And this can be really tricky and difficult to get apart. But, uh, you know, you, have, you can work at it, or like I said, you could just try throwing the whole thing in the fire, incinerating it, and then just getting, you know, the, the, the gold bond wires out of the ashes and then pulling the, uh, the copper heat sink out and taking that to the recycler separately. That's probably your best bet with these, because these are, with the multiple layers of metal there, it's really hard to peel apart and get at the, the chip inside with the gold bond wires. So anyway, I hope that helps answer some of the questions I get about BGA chips. I know I was a little scatterbrained there. I should, maybe should have scripted this a little bit, but um, I get a lot of different questions, and I just sort of try to throw these out there and try and uh, answer as many of them as I can. If you have more questions or comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave me a comment. Go to my website, my blog, and uh, you can find my email address if you want to email me, you don't want to make a public comment, whatever, you can email me. And uh, let me know what you think, let me know what your questions are, your concerns, but uh, when you're scrapping, always save the BGA chips. You know, not these. these, these are junk, but the rest of them contain good gold, really good gold. So always save these BGA chips here and process them and get your gold out of them. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this a little bit interesting, informative, whatever. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and subscribe to see future videos. There'll be more videos coming out on scrapping and retro computing and all kinds of other stuff, gold recovery, whatnot. So uh, subscribe to see those future videos. Press the little bell icon. YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. And thanks again for watching. Have a good one. Bye.